For this video I'll be showing you how to replace both bearings inside of the rear fixed half of the drive pulley. Now this is from a Minarelli or Jog scooter, a two stroke. Should be a very similar process for most scooters. To start out you'll need to get the contra spring, the clutch, the torque driver, and the pins off of this pulley and get it all cleaned up. And if you're not familiar with how to do that, I'll go ahead and put a link in the video or in the description to show you how. I want my new bearings to be cold so they're easier to install later. So before starting, I put the bearings in the freezer. You want to give it at least a few hours, or better yet, you can leave them in there overnight. One of the reasons I wanted to make this video is because I've used a slide hammer style puller the other times I've needed to replace a bearing in the rear pulley. But last time I decided to do one, for whatever reason, I chose to try a pilot bearing puller, like you see here, just to see how that worked. And I found out the hard way that that doesn't work very well at all. The reason is, it's got the jaws, they go down in, and they grip the bearing just fine. But you can see, this style of puller has legs that will sit on the drive face of the pulley. And when you pull, it puts all the pressure against on those legs and against the drive face and what I ended up doing was warping the pulley to a point that it couldn't really be repaired. So don't use any style of puller that puts force onto the uh, drive face of the pulley here. So this is the bearing extractor kit that I'll be using. This is the slide hammer style puller. It also does have a, a puller with legs on it but don't use that if you have this kind of kit. And then you can see it's got a bunch of different attachments to fit multiple bearing sizes. Now what I'll need to do is go through here and find the largest of the puller attachments that will fit into this rear needle bearing. And I've already checked and I know it will be this one, that's the very largest one that will fit through there. So that'll be the first puller attachment that I'm using. And once you figure out which attachment you'll need, then you'll need to find wrenches that fit it. To set the adapter up, you're going to drop it down through the bearing. And what you want to do is make sure that this flared section is all the way past the opposite end of the bearing that you're working with. So I'm going to drop that all the way through, kind of hang on to it, and then this top piece needs to be tightened down. And when you tighten this top piece, it will cause the uh, adapter to expand and grab onto the other side of that bearing. So again, I'll drop it down through there, make sure it's all the way through, and then I'll start tightening this to expand it and grab that bearing on the other side. Now I make sure that I've got my slide hammer attachment handy near the pulley, and I'm getting ready to heat the pulley. I'll be using a heat gun. You could also use a uh, small propane torch and you can use a non-contact thermometer if you'd like to kind of monitor the temperature of the pulley. You'll also want to have a set of gloves like welding gloves to protect yourself from the heat. The idea is to heat the pulley itself without heating the uh, bearing or the puller any more than you have to which is kind of difficult because it's going to transfer heat but again I'm going to try to get the uh, the pulley up to about 250 degrees or so. Now I've got my pulley up to temperature so I can get ready to attach my slide hammer. All that does is screw on to the adapter. And once that's attached, I'll hold one hand up here on the adapter and against the pulley. And then I'll use the other hand to slide this slide hammer against its end, kind of slam it against there, and that should start to draw the bearing out of the pulley. Hopefully you can see it's starting to come out a little bit there. See, it's working its way out. Of 
get in there. Almost, so you want to be careful when it gets towards the end because you don't want to put so much pressure on here that this flies off. And there is the bearing still attached to the uh, polar adapter and free of the pulley. Now you want to get in here what was hard to reach before with a rag and some cleaner and get any grease out that's left inside of there before you go further. Now I'll need to remove the clip that's down inside the pulley and prevents that bearing on the opposite end from coming out this way through this side. Hopefully you can see there's a hole about here and one here on that clip or that snap ring down there. You'll need a set of internal snap ring or retaining ring pliers and they have a little point on the end of each side. Now I've got my pliers set up inside the snap ring so the little points are inside the holes I showed you. Then you'll go ahead and squeeze the pliers. That'll compress the snap ring and then try to pull it out. Now at this point, you could use a puller like we did before, come in from this side of the pulley and pull the bearing out that way. I find it a little easier to find a socket or something that very closely matches the uh, diameter in here, put that in and then drive it out. Or you could also press it out. Before I start trying to remove that bearing, I'm gonna go ahead and heat the pulley right around this outside edge here a bit. Again, maybe get it up to 200 to 250 degrees. Now it's hot. Put my socket in there, up against that bearing, and then I'll just use the hammer and drive it out. Once the pulley cools, then you want to go in there one more time with rags and some kind of cleaner and make sure the inside of the pulley is as clean as you can get it. You'll also want to take the old bearing and find a socket that very closely matches its outside diameter. I'm hoping that it doesn't take much effort at all to get that in there, but you want to have the socket and a hammer ready. You also want to get a piece of wood handy, something like an old 2x4, and put the pulley face down on that instead of putting your uh, pulley on a metal workbench or anything hard. That'll help to keep these threads from being damaged anytime you do have to put any force on the pulley itself. Now I've got the block of wood, the socket I talked about, a hammer. I went ahead and got the uh, bearing out of the freezer that goes into this side of the pulley. So I'm going to go ahead and heat the pulley up again about 200, 250 degrees. Then what I'll do I take my bearing and set it on top of a socket because I find it a little difficult sometimes to drop them in straight and instead I'll kind of drop the uh, pulley over the socket and that way I can push it up straight and hopefully you can see it's went all the way up against the lip there where it sits. So I'll flip that back over and let that cool down. If it doesn't go all the way up against that lip, then you may need to take your socket and hammer and kind of tap it in, or you can press it down the rest of the way. Once that's cooled, find your snap ring that you removed earlier, and put your snap ring pliers in the snap ring. Then you need to compress it, and slide that down into the pulley. And you should see that there's a groove just below that bearing, as long as the bearing has been seated properly and the snap ring needs to fit into that groove all the way around. Now I want to get a couple more things handy before I go any further. I'll take the old needle bearing and I find a socket that matches up very close to its outside diameter just a tiny bit smaller. I also grabbed a small chunk of wood here, a little chunk of 2x4 and what I'll do with that is you could drive the bearing in all the way just using the socket but I'll start out using the 2x4 just so it's a little softer until I need to switch over to the socket. And Once I've got all that then again I'll put my gloves on and start heating the pulley with my heat gun so that I can put the needle bearing in.
I've got my pulley hot and I've went ahead and grabbed my new bearing out of the freezer. So I'm going to drop this in as straight as I can. In here, it's not really, they, they usually don't fall in in this case. Then I'll take the block of wood and place that over it. Hold that and start tapping it down. Okay, I think that's as far as I'm going to get it using a block of wood. So then I'll switch over to my socket. Again, that should match up close to the outside diameter of that. And then drive it the rest of the way in with the socket. Okay. And there you can see it's basically flush just slightly below this surface here. And once this cools down, you're pretty much good to go. You'll need to put some grease inside the uh, needle bearing there and then reassemble the rear pulley. Mm -hmm.